Hello everybody, welcome to episode 43 of the Contest Round podcast. If you don't know already, we're available on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify and iTunes podcast. Make sure to uh, favourite us, follow us, whatever the thing is. Do that with the power of clicking. As always, I'm joined by Dan of Frontline MCC. Make sure you go to link in the description, put as your homepage or one of your favourite pages, frontlinemcc.home.blog. It's very important. There's key information that is dropped from around the battle realm. Hello, mate. You okay? I'm doing all right, Rich. I had to uh, shovel about 15 inches of snow yesterday. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you got so snow. It's a, it's a white Christmas here. Got to take the uh, little guy sledding. Um, you know, I'm a little sore, but we had a blast. It, it's a good time, and, it, uh, you know, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Not here, it's not. It's gloomy. It's peeing down with rain. Uh, sounds, sounds very British over there, yeah. Rich. <laughs> quintessential quintessential british like i keep saying yep. to em are we good we're gonna get snow from over there and she's like oh i bloody hope we don't and i'm like why oh because we won't be able to go to, we won't we won't be able to do anything for christmas so was covid's on enough we know we could do anything for christmas right oh. i mean yeah we can't we we're not doing anything we usually uh we usually host and and uh you know my family and my in-laws and cook for everybody and uh mm. you know do presents um uh, for the little guy uh, but yeah i mean all that's kind of out the window it's just uh it's just a steady stream of amazon boxes so from the uh from a five-year-old's perspective every day it's just like waiting for the mail <laughs> he's exciting. just like is anything going to arrive for me today do i get presents and of course he gets he gets hanukkah presents <laughs> which he's been getting now and he's about to start getting christmas presents and last month was his birthday so he is uh he's a little spoiled right now oh are you are you jewish i didn't know are you jewish then dan my my, my wife is oh l'chaim yes thank you <laughs> and, uh... i don't know what that means i just know that jewish people say it what does it mean i i don't even know how to spell it so i can't look it up <laughs> <laughs> i don't just say like people just go like uh, yeah but uh, yeah they're uh they're they're uh you know they're celebrating hanukkah right now and uh you know but we've got the christmas tree up and the lights and you know it's the best of both worlds it's wonderful yeah oh, christmas i need i I'm, I'm in the christmas spirit you know if anybody's watching on youtube for the next podcast we're going to be recording because me and dan are doing three we're trying to do three one big lot i've got a christmas hat in order to you know make it somewhat festive people that are listening imagine if you will through the yeah, just imagine that there's there's Christmassy. We're both in Christmas sweaters and sorry, I'm UK. I'm from the UK. A Christmas jumper. You Christmas say, jumper. <laughs> yeah, you call it a jump. I call it a jumper. You call it a sweater. So um, the yeah, just uh, babies are the only things that wear jumpers in the US. So <laughs> oh right, yeah, those things. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to think of the other kind of like weird like or different stuff. I mean, we have pigs in blank. You have pig- do you have pigs in blankets on your Christmas? We have we have pigs in blankets. Yeah, pigs in blankets. Um, I'm guessing you do you have Brussels sprouts. We we do, you know? but they're 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 not they're not a preferred menu item. I would say <laughs> little fart balls. I, yeah, no, actually, my <laughs> wife makes them with like maple. She she uh, spr- sprinkles like maple syrup on it, so oh, it actually so doesn't nice. taste bad. <laughs> Sometimes they do. Um, we do like little bits of bacon. I think people have done like uh, what is See, it? See, but bacon bacon's a cheat. Yeah, it is. It's isn't it? like bacon makes everything better, and and then whatever you're you're making is just a vehicle for bacon. It's the same thing with cheese. It's like mm, it's it's true. a it's a cooking cheat code. Nah, it's true. It's just like bringing ghost with wasp. Good. I, that's that's good. I was gonna say we need to kind of like take this conversation onto onto like more MCC. You see, you see how I segued that? Yeah, that's good. Oh. Let's talk about let's talk about the week that was uh, with the featured six star crystals, Rich. Mm-hmm. Have you done any? It was those? a big. It was a big week, and we both yeah. did openings, and I think we both uh, don't quite know how to feel about them. No, um, my sentiment was is taking a roster sideways and not forward and what i mean by that is like i've got five i'm still in the point where i've got 565 five stars which are higher sig but getting replicated versions of six star that are unawakened kind of makes me go 
I don't really need to take these any higher than they are. I'm I'm right there with you. That's the same thing that happened to me. And, and I was waiting on this opening to see if there were resources I was going to spend on uh, rank twoing uh, six stars hmm. uh, if I got a great pull. But I, I didn't really. So then it was like, all right, I guess I'll rank five Quake and I'll probably rank five Magneto soon as well because I had resources in the overflow. It's like, all right, well, we know that a, a, a rank five Quake and a rank five Magneto are going to help me uh, <laughs> a lot more than uh, sort of the middle of the road unduped champions I was pulling from the six star crystal. Yeah, there, there was some, uh, I mean, for me, I I do I did want to get Red Goblin, got it. I, I it. wanted to get him too, and I did get him. Oh, so that's I, good. I was pretty happy with that. I ranked two mine. I've been using it in variant six. Have been haven't been having a, a great time with it. The only yeah. other one I think I put any people have gone uh, immortal Hulk suicide. I don't run suicide. Uh, Mister Fantastic was when I had as a as a contender to rank five as a five star. So yep. I guess I'll rank to the six star. But I need to have a look at the stats and compare it off first. Whether I kind of like feel. Yeah, I think his sig is pretty important. Mm. Yeah. Although he he is nice if you if you do play a lot of void, he's nice to have on the team. Yeah, I've been using him as a unfortunately a, a synergy pad for Doctor Doom getting right. the armor break. Yeah, um, that's the other thing too. <laughs> is it's it's nice to have him, but if you already had the copy, you kind of had that base covered. Yeah. The only other thing I, I'd look to utilize him with is uh, maybe a tandem team with Red Guardian and try and get those debuffs on and just kind of like just oh, yeah. slay. So I think that would that's that may be something in the future, but I need to kind of figure out what content I need. Is that more of a specific thing? Am I going to use it for, I don't know, two to three paths of one given quest, but then not use them at all specifically elsewhere? So it's just making those things so uh, yeah i just felt that it was very mixed i personally felt a little bit disappointed not to pick up anything else that was on my wish list and i had cosmic ghost rider pocket as everyone did professor yep. x um yep. dragon man dragon man yeah yeah those are the the big ones the list uh, goes on yeah i mean they were you know ghost was in there as well um mm. uh, some really good champions i mean i i walked away with some some pretty good champions i got falcon nice, i got gambit nice. i got vision i'm, I'm actually mm. pretty excited about that vision but yeah uh, again you know you really need to awaken uh vision yeah um uh, you know i got cable which is okay if i eventually get apocalypse mm -hmm. and uh, i got punisher 2099 who's kind of you know kind of meh yeah. so it's like i you know i i didn't dupe uh green goblin like i saw some people do <laughs> but we didn't you know it's like okay it, it wasn't it wasn't the worst of options but it also you know wasn't the best of options either mm. it's been the one time where i've been more excited for a six star to then feel very much i think it's the first time i've gone for six star featured i don't know if i feel yeah. that i've wasted my shards or not getting six champions as opposed to nine technically they're still usable but at the same same time i'm like well am i gonna go for this part of me part of me feels like whatever happens with these greater gifting crystals which we'll talk about further on in the um in the podcast if there is a large amount of six star shards available i may go for two to four more and then that's it and then kind of go i'm gonna cut my losses and go i'm not doing these again i'll stick to six star basics and just hope for the best but I do have a very special Christmas Day opening I'm looking forward to. I'm doing a six-star uh, six star skill Nexus crystal and a standard six-star crystal and then maybe something else. But, you know, that's just going to be, hopefully, some luck. But, you know, we'll have to see. I'm hoping to get a um, an awakening on Aegon or, nice. or like something like uh, Nick Fury for the first time. But we'll have to see. Hope for the best for that one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this six star feature just because I need some god tiers and mm -hmm. there are quite a few in this crystal and you only need to get one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I also need some six star dupes and it's just a lot easier to dupe 
uh, champions from a crystal with 24 instead of what 150 or so That's uh, champions. Point. So yeah. I'm I'm just gonna try to ride this out because it's really hard for me to dupe uh, six stars. I've only got two and um, the the champion and Hulk Buster, which are okay, mm-hmm. um, but. Even at rank three, um, a, a Sig Twenty Hulkbuster does not impact your prestige. No, uh, and I don't want to start feeding him Sig Stone. So I, I need to get my prestige moving, and to do that, I need duped six stars of some quality. So hopefully, by the time this crystal runs out in another three months, I will have a few of those. Yeah, no, that, that's 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 a relevant point. Maybe um, maybe I might I might do that as well. As I do plan to do a lot of stuff content-wise, we're hoping. No, great gifting crystals. Now I've done, I've done like all the, we've done all this content. Now we need a little bit of a lazy kind of breather, and hopefully the great gifting crystals give a lot of six-star shards. Hopefully, but, so uh, gifting's going live on the twenty-first. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Do you have um, do you have a budget or a goal from from gifting? We haven't seen one of those uh, nice charts. I assume you're going to do some sort of a spreadsheet about the most efficient way to gift once I, uh once we have the info i didn't think about i didn't think about it just then but i might actually do it that that probably will kind of like inspire me to do it well we'll have to, yes i will i will do one of those thank you dan for reminding me i'll, I'll put it on my uh my list of jobs to do uh, you know in your free time yeah in free time <laughs> there's a, and there's a lot of lots content wise man variant six and have you managed to do any variant six yet? I have not gotten into variant six at all yet. This is the concern that I have. I'm gonna like um, th- there's two things to talk about. First of all, variant six, and the second second point is to like where where we can like feel we are with being caught up with content because um, December's been a big month for, for oh, content. Yeah. Um, variant six, I've enjoyed so far. I went for the the problem is I keep on doing content later on in the evening, and later on in the evening I'm tired as hell. Like that's I'll... that's why I haven't done it yet. <laughs> yeah, I need to. I need some weekend time to approach things like book two and variant six fresh. Yeah, no, that's that's so true. I, yeah, I, I just kind of like I, it's it's important for me to be a content creator and cover some of this stuff that as it as it drops. But the, I put out a highlights video on Sunday of all the stream stuff. The first stream that I did, the when the content went live. I was exhausted. I've stopped drinking coffee in the evening because it just, like, I never get to sleep. I never get to sleep and I'm ruined for the next day. Uh, but it was keeping me somewhat alert. But I know my performance is off as hell. And then, But then when I've done the midday streams and yesterday streams, coming out a bit more fresher, I've had time to look at champions, I've been finding these little fun things. Using a Vulture. Vulture with the node, I think it's called Genius Node. And he's able to... Uh, still not still power he's able to um uh what's it put some kind of like power burn type thing if you put on the sp2 at the same time which is the the feed the um, thermal feedback yeah and you're like seeing ticks for about five thousand plus the extra damage being taken you're like on hit every single hit you're doing like six thousand plus your um standard damage and it's like it's just that's so much fun when a champion who you don't usually use is suddenly uh, does some work in a new piece of content. I love that. Yeah, I've also been... Um, I mean, one of my favorites is the Abomination with uh, abomination Synergy with Red Guardian. Oh, and yes. And that pair of Eastern Blockers. Because then there's boost to the poison damage uh, based on certain node interactions as well. And I'm like, this is this is enjoyable. But, you know, when I went to do the first initial clear, I was just like, I'll try and do the first initial clear. I was just like, so blah, blah, blah. And that's, <laughs> the, that's the thing. I just kind of like, I stopped the stream partway through because it's just like, I'm just so uninterested with playing MCOC at the moment. And that's the concern I think I've had about like, try not to get too burnt out. Oh, for sure. With a, with a month this full and, and you feel the pressure to get out there and do the content because everyone else is doing it it's yeah. like i i can't compete with these guys who basically play the game full time and mm. uh have ripped through a hundred percent of uh variant six in the first 48 hours it's like okay i'll i'll get to it when i get to it <laughs> that's the nice thing about permanent content though yeah. like you're like all right it's gonna be there i don't have to worry about it expiring like 
my, my big thing for tomorrow is to finish the John Mulaney challenge because that only has about two weeks left. Oh, yeah. I need to get that done. Hmm. I think for me, I, I said to myself, I I think we, like, I only had a week. What was happening with that? That's it. I rushed to get all the Epoch shards. Yeah. Then what I decided to do was then go and do the John Mulaney challenge. I think, oh, I can't remember how it all fell, but I think I 100%ed in 24 hours uncollected. I then did the Epoch shards from the side event in 24 hours as well. I want to say I did it a lot less than that. Um, and then it was like, okay, do this other content, uh, which was John Mulaney at the weekend. And mm -hmm. then I think I had a limited time to do something else. And then the Wednesday after was Act 7.1. And for a first, uh, I managed to do completion on uh, on day one. I think it, like I did four hours I th and, and did it. But yeah, it's just everything's just a blur, and especially with Marvel Realm dropping at the same time as... Everything else, variant six and stuff. <laughs> what a month! <laughs> it's what it's what a month. It's like taking a breather just to go, and I'm like, I'm I set myself some targets where I was like, I wanted to 100% variant six by Sunday, so that I would have more time available to just do the last bits of Cavalier, and then do an extensive arena grind. Oh yeah, we had the arenas, didn't we? We had the little shard arenas. Ugh. The the little shard arena that took 250 rounds. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, honestly, like, trying to then fit in time. I mean, and, you know, me and you... Yeah, you can only do so much. I only got up to about 2.2 2. 2 million on that six-star arena before I was like, okay, I just, I don't have any more time. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not going to kill myself. It's, it's like, you know, somebody's just like, okay, it's it's okay to wait or it's okay to call a, call a timeout. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, you could get the six-star shots from doing an incursions run in Sector 8, so it's like... Yeah. You know, um, that's, that's, that, you know, and that would take less time, funny enough. Uh, so yeah. that's something of a, 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 a posit positive one could say. But Variant 6 has got these kind of little, little fun bits of interaction. I've still got to find a decent way to take on the Hell's Kitchen Daredevil. Didn't have a good oh, yeah. first one at that run at that one. You know, what's, what's the issue with that guy? Since um, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't looked at it yet. Oh, that's it. That is a very good point. Am I stuck in a quest? That I can just like read out some of the the nodes from it. No, I guess I can't. I can get, get to variant six. So my issue was it was I wasn't playing. T that's at the point I just said to myself, I've had enough for this evening. I am going to bed. I am tired, and I I do not have time to concentrate on this stuff. So that's he's just, um... he's a little tricky now. Like I I run him in, into him in map seven sometimes. Uh, and he's one of the harder fights on my path. I think it's uh, the, now. S the SP one that just gets me. Like I, I... it's forever, and yeah. I I have him. It's it's a tunnel vision uh, daredevil of Hell's Kitchen, and so you have to worry about missing, and you're trying to balance out your combo, and you maybe you're cutting things off short because you can only go medium light medium. Mm -hmm. It's uh, he he is tricky, yeah, and you want to get back in there and punish the special. But it goes on forever. <laughs> yeah, I think with this the, this one, it's it's just a case of like the for me. I think I was just struggling with the SP one. There's nothing really spectacular on this guy. Um, I think biohazard's annoying because it does limit who you're going up against. People said use a mega red, and I think I think Metal Sonic dude used Dormammu. I actually might do that going back in, but. I want to go into it with a more of a clear head. It's more aggressive, but I think it's just the way that the character, I think in a heavy attack, goes into at certain points of the combos. I think goes into a unstoppable heavy attack, and that's kind of annoying. But I think it's just timing oh, yeah. with that SP one that's the, the the biggest thing. I just need to remember what punch it is because at times it has this little point where it breaks, and I'm like, okay, that's the point to go in and attack the champion after it throws. But apart from that, it's like. Oh, oh, I've missed it. Oh, I'm being smacked. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> so it's just it's just that, really. Uh, apart from that, lanes reaching up to get to the champion. I think I've got a lot of vulnerability. No, that, uh, one path I went on has a load of vulnerability, so that, that was quite fun. But apart from that, it's um, it's all right. It's, 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 an, it's a cool variant. I just need to kind of like spend some time, I think, over the weekend just to kind of like do the last dregs of it. And also... Decide whether or not I'm going to go and throw on Resonate, but I don't really want to throw on a Mastery just for the purpose of one thing. 
to get you know, I was I was hearing that resonates very popular, and that's a mastery I've been thinking about adding because I'm playing so much void these days, mm. and I'm just waiting for uh, gifting so I can actually trade the uh, what's it the the carbonadium carb cores? core yeah, yeah carbonadium core, but it's like 550 units. Eesh. So that's that's why I haven't done it yet. But I figure, all right, well, if I'm going to do it, might as well do it during uh, gifting and, yeah, and get some extra wise. points for it. That sounds like a wise idea. Yeah, I'm, I might have to do something similar as well. I, I am interested, um, and I'm not. I need to try. There's one lane that I need to do to 100%. I think it's chapter two, where I want to bring uh, Green Goblin in and try to just try him on a few things. Especially as I know, I saw some people on Twitter going, "Oh, he's oh Green Goblin." Oh, I always it's terrible, terrible. Um, I had a bit mm -hmm. of a bash against uh, Mojo. Um, didn't do too badly. The consistency of that weakness is something to question, but a, apart from that, you know, it's it would open up possibilities for that particular interaction. So maybe I'll hold off on that until the weekend. I need to see, really. I need to see. In any case, um, get, okay, gifting 2020, as you said, starts on Monday. What do we think is going to be in these greater gifting crystals? That is a is a very good question. And I think most of it um, is, is surrounding T5CC, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, is that going to be in there? Wow. Have, have, have they said anything about these crystals? Like, there's just one, right? Like, there's not like a Thronebreaker one and a Cavalier one and an mm. uncollected one. It's just all. It just is just a greater gifting crystal. <sighs> no, I don't think they've really, no? they said anything about that. Not that I've seen. Unless some, as Peter were last week. By the way, I've pinged you, Dan. The um, the last oh. year's one, um, greater gifting crystal. So I'm going to throw on screen if you're watching on on YouTube. But we will read read it out as well. Very um, very helpful. But it was just the one last year. It was just the one last year. But there was okay. the, the, the lesser one, just the standard gifting. So uh, for people listening, um, 50,000 gold, a tier 5 class, ISO 8 chunk, and a bonus item. That's in the, the base, I think, no, secondary, secondary. The bonus item can, oh, the bonus item can be anything from tier 2 Alpha Catus, Fragments, 5 star signature stones, 5 star class awakening gem, 4, 5, or 6 star hero crystals, crystal shards. A tier four class catalyst crystal, tier five basic catalyst fragments, four or five star Kang, or a Thanos or a six star Kang. But it's a good point to say, like, if, is it um, going to be split? Now, I don't know. We'll have to wait until Monday. I haven't seen anything in the CCP uh, to, to know anything otherwise. I don't know if anything's been discussed, if anything has or hasn't been. That will be a factor on Monday. So um, keep vigilant for Monday when information yeah, I, will drop. I, just looking at that is there's not really anything six star related from last year's crystal other than six star shards. Mm. So you have to wonder, it's like, OK, are they going to throw some six star signature stones in there? Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone wants tier two alpha. Maybe they could be whole tier two alpha. Uh, I'd love to see the tier four class catalyst become a selector. Yeah, I think that would that would feel a lot better. I, I don't think I don't think too many players want to see T four CC as is a random drop. Yeah, <laughs> in a greater gifting crystal that doesn't that doesn't feel too great. It's kind of a you know it it would be annoying and good to see a split in types of crystals, and whether or not they'll they'll do something of going like well how do they I mean, Kabam have not got an easy job to like benchmark what is going to be appropriate and disappointing for you in your perspective perspective titleages. Does a throne right. break throne breaker player want to see a four star shards? No. Does a throne breaker player want to see things like a small amount of gold or tier five class catalyst? Hmm. Possibly not, especially with the way that dual class crystals have replaced the need for um iso by providing more of a you know optional thing especially like choosing the champion you want or choosing the, the class you want and normally you're kind of like getting something that's a load of iso but it's also going to be elements of like you said six star signature stones that throne breaker players want to see but the main thing will be will they drop in tier five class catalyst 
And if they give this out so, um, there's a word in the UK called willy nilly. Uh, do you have that phrase willy nilly? We do have the willy nilly. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, the phrase willy nilly applies. So just throwing out to everybody, tier five class cast catalyst gives the idea that out of a weird realm of possibility, somebody with a lesser account would be able to get up to a um, technical throne breaker. So maybe there will be certain caps on certain types of crystals. If there is an upgraded one that's saying anything, I don't know, level 40, level 50 and above, level 60, have one type of crystal and then there's another one. But that's that's going to be a yeah. difficult one. I don't know if that uh, would... What do you think, Dad? Would that sink or swim? I, I don't know. I think uh, people are already so salty about all these different progression tiers. That I think if they did anything really to to split it too to uh too much especially if it was a cavalier to throne breaker mm. uh split i think people be very upset but it's like i don't know do you see something like a six star class awakening gem in there but then it's like all right like what is what does someone who's uncollected need that for yeah that's and, and, just... and the other side of it is you know if you're a whale like you can just keep buying those gifting crystals and go for the number one spot and end up with uh six star awakening gems in your overflow and this is the thing whether or not kabam decided that the way that they've buffed solo is that for those players that want to go for solo decent scores the only yeah. only value would be not with greater gifting crystals because they probably would look or sound like what how we've just described them from last year's but they give more value to you being getting the uh, the rank as opposed to you know these crystals to to spin out and pop so i don't know if that's that's where kabam are giving the value to the throne breaker as opposed to the value to the cavalier or throw or uncollected or, or otherwise but then you know the, the fun and the weirdness of uh, a level 10 player picking up a spider gwen six star you know those are those are some pretty funny things to happen so i don't know if they would be they are, decision. but they also get, they always get an outsized uh, proportion of the community response because we love to act shocked. And <gasps> like, could you believe this from gifting? Yes. I don't even have a four star K. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just started an account and has this. It's like, okay. It's like, uh, you know, are you, uh, are you planning to go uh, for the milestones? Uh, I, uh, I'm probably going to spend about well I, th I said to myself I'd spend about 3,000 units so I'd probably buy an mm -hmm. Odin early next week and then one on Christmas day but I, I, I don't know I'm in this very weird state where I'm like because I've got a chunk of units and I'm saving them for Abyss early next year I'm like I don't want to dip into them but at the same time, yep. I do plan to grind. It comes in like stages. For me, I want a 100% variant 6 ASAP, then Cavalier event quest, then do predominantly arena grinding and try and end the year. So 31st of December, end with 16,000 units, budgeting at least 4,000 units per Abyss Path, but have a, a option to kind of grind arena whilst I'm um, doing those runs. So I'm, I'm a bit kind of dubious about, not dubious, I'm a bit kind of um, precious about my grind in um, in the gifting event. But personally, sure. I might want to do it. You know? Well, you can always uh, pick up some units on Christmas Day because there's usually uh, a sale uh, with bonus items on Christmas Day. That's true. And the gifting event so, does ra run a little bit longer. So if you're yeah. kind of waiting for like um, iTunes cards, birthday presents, or kind of going like, look, will I have any extra money after Christmas that I want to spend a little bit? Then maybe it's the case you're going like, mm, this is maybe a time. Yeah. If you're, if you're planning on buying uh, units for gifting, don't buy them day one. Wait and see what the offers are on Christmas. Because... Mm -hmm. You're going to still get the same units and you'll get extra stuff. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, personally, I, I'll probably contribute enough to hit all the alliance milestones, assuming that's what my alliance does. I, mm -hmm. I expect they will based on 
just the maturity of the alliance uh, that will complete all of the the milestones, and that that should put us in that top five percent um, for um, alliance gifting rewards. So I guess that's what is that? That's there's five two percent T five CCs in the milestones, and then there's another two. So that's fourteen <laughs> percent. Or working our way there, Rich. Working, <laughs> working my way to Thronebreaker. One, uh, two percent crystal at a time. Yeah. And we'll see. I, I assume that would. I don't know. I hitting all the milestones. If that puts me in the top five percent, uh, for the solo objectives, that would be another three two percenters. So now we're up to twenty, uh, twenty percent of uh, tier five CC. Of course, split. 10 different ways uh but there's some you know there's some solid rewards there a lot of shards mm -hmm. so a bit a bit rng dependent but you know some tier 2 alpha some tier 5 basics so uh you know gifting gifting's all right yeah i mean it's it's so weird isn't it to kind of go <sighs> when Thronebreaker was kind of added as to like the the plight of uh, of the cavalier player to kind of get to that point and like just the long the long game i just had to think to myself like what why i wanted to become throne breaker so quickly and i think i'd be i would be a little bit kind of just a little bit frustrated that i was not throne breaker more quicker if i wasn't throne breaker now and like the abyss run was kind of a last ditch attempt i think to go look you got the champions just just do it and see what happens yeah. but um yeah I guess that's the same thing with six star features. You were kind of like hoping for something to then go, look, is this going to be something I want to push the button on, prepare for something like Abyss? Yeah, for sure. Like that, that's the thing is, is we, you kind of touched on it at the top of uh, the show. It's like, wh how are you trying to build your roster? Are you trying to make it wider or are you trying to add that that next level of, of height to it with a new rank? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking I'm looking to build on that next level right now, but I just can't get any traction. Yeah, I guess the thing what, what great gifting will do if they do have tier five class catalyst, because if if you if you're not going to carbonadium core route, then maybe like well, if you go that route and you may be in the master and pick up a great gifting crystal and there's a tier five class catalyst uh, crystal within it say 2% or 5% or whatever, then that could be good in any case for you to, to get that oh, further. Oh, yeah. Momentum. I mean, any any T5CC mm. is is wonderful. I mean, I would I would rather have uh, even a 2% Tier 5 CC versus a 5-star Awakening gem at this point, as insane as that sounds. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I've got, I've got like three generics and pretty much every class sitting in my... Uh, in my stash right now like there's there's such a when you're on that cusp of, of trying to get that first rank three is you kind of put on the blinders and, and tier five class catalysts are the only thing that matters it's like okay mm. what do i complete to uh to get to get more t5 cc yeah god that's it. did you have you done an initial clear of um 7.1 book two at one sorry i i did i did an initial clear uh last weekend yes Nice. Yeah, very enjoyable. Yeah, absolutely. Same, same with me. How? Uh, where did your uh, tier five CC crystal drop? I got a twenty five percent mystic, nice. which actually pushed mystic up to the number two. Um, I'm at thirty six k out of forty five for mystic. I'm at forty one k out of forty five for cosmic. That's my closest. Mm. is cosmic now i did buy the uh 3500 unit offer cool. uh that included the 15 percent uh tier 5 cc which i did choose cosmic for to get to that mm -hmm. uh 4100 oh it's so close uh, at the so moment. close so close rich if i could <laughs> i mean i'm close enough where if um you know if if what i complete uh cavalier difficulty if my ten percent is cosmic, that's it. I've I've made it. Nice. I've Getting got there. still a. I've got a. I've got one fully formed cosmic and one fully formed skill, but I've got the reason I'm holding back on them is 
what was going to happen with the six star featured i'm still not done with it yet i'm still holding out for cosmic ghost rider right yeah you don't want to spend that and then land cosmic ghost rider but i will um give up and i will push the button on uh my captain cat Marvel movie by about say end of the just about the end of the year because i'm just gonna mm -hmm. go like like you know I'm just gonna spend it, or I'll do I mean, the abyss. Runs. I mean, she's still a she's still a top tier option. Yeah, actually, I mean, that's probably gonna be my first rank three is Captain Marvel movie. Nice. Yeah, I think my yeah. skill one is gonna go for Aegon if, and this is only if the <laughs> if the, the, the six, big if <laughs> the six star Nexus drops uh, <laughs> drops well for me, uh, and and just do that, and then that'll be a better option, a fun option to to take back into Abyss of Legends. Oh yeah. Uh, when I when I do like further grinds and that, but you know it is what it is. All right, let's talk about instability and this Spider Ham's piggy bank. Yes, yeah, Sp all... Spider Ham causing lots of problems. I can't I can't believe it. And, and, right. and people have been asking me, they're like, Dan, what's up with the piggy bank? I'm like, I don't know because it was live for about thirty seconds. Uh, we didn't have any advanced warning that this thing was coming. We never got like a yeah. a preview sheet of of what it was all about so uh it was like it was there and then it it was gone but uh it seemed like it was still causing issues i don't know if they were they kept trying to bring it back or work on it but it seemed to be uh mm. i mean they've they've admitted it much that it was the cause of the instability over the past week yeah i i don't know if it's like because it's something that tracks with um unit acquisition with arena grind that it, uh, and quest that it causes it you know, to because it's a tracking tracking thing in a, I don't know, store becomes a bit of an issue for it to. You think know, it was like a server it. load? There's just too much yeah. going on. Yeah, it was the first time we've seen a feature like that. So it is, mm. um, in some regards, and I don't I, untested is kind of unfair to say. I'm sure they try they tested it, but it's not it's not a functionality we've seen in the live environment before. Yeah. I'm not quite sure like how it works. Like I've got <laughs> that's my other thing. <laughs> yeah, I've got an image of it up from the one that I usually put into like um, news and stuff. But it's like uh, added added at forty units is two level four health potions. Added at sixty units is one level one revive, and added at eighty units is two level four team health potions. Now um, level two level four health potions. That's five thousand apiece, isn't it? I don't know what it's on. It is with level four, the team one. I have to have a quick look in his store. Second, um, all right, potions. So I've got this on screen on YouTube. If anybody is uh, watching that, so yeah, they give back. Oh, only two thousand two hundred. So you're getting two two thousand two hundred health potions for everyone in the team, or and unlike two level four solely potions, which I think definitely think they are for five thousand apiece. They are five thousand apiece, and one level one revive. I don't know if I'd be interested with two pounds ninety nine. It, uh, I, how much would that be with you? Like four dollars ninety nine or something? No, it must be less than that. Probably, probably be three or four bucks. Yeah, yeah. probably like four bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would be interested in in getting that. I think the only thing would be interesting me with the revive. The other stuff, I'm like, well, you can get the level four ones from solo event stuff but to be honest all of that stuff you can get from yeah i, I, I don't know I, I don't know what to really how to really describe it if there was more on offer in there like i don't know it was two or three revives i may be going oh i'm interested but mm, yeah i don't know some people will buy it so it is what it is yeah just yep, confusing but no, not not this year they won't <laughs> no, definitely not the year that this year won't <laughs> Right, I think that might have concluded a lot of the MCOC related stuff that we were we were going to talk about. And this yeah. is something that you can think of from this week. No, to talk I about. think I think that's it for a busy week. But there was one other thing that happened in uh, the Kabam world, and that was the global launch of Realm of Champions. I can't believe we are finally at that stage to say that I this is know, this is going to be released. What, 14, 15 months after we initially learned about the game, it is finally here for everyone to uh, play and, and potentially enjoy. Yeah, and we use potentially because there's, there's been like, a, well, I've definitely seen like a couple people kind of rip into it a little bit. 
and this is one of the reasons that I have both the channels. The reason I put it on the, the this kind of podcast on the main channel is that, well, predominantly we talk about Marvel Contest of Champions and we do uh, talk about Marvel Realm because it's the Contest Realm podcast. If you didn't know that, then you don't know much about why we created the podcast in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now you do. But now you do. <laughs> I love this game. I didn't know if I was going to love it as much because of how it was in beta. And this is why like I've been saying for countless weeks and months and whatnot, it needs global because the matchmaking algorithm is just so ridiculous. For the diehard players, no disrespect, the diehard players have played it from start to finish. They're at the tippity top. And the problem with being at the tippity top is they then squash all the lower people, which means yep. that newer people that come in aren't really interested in being beaten all the time because the matchmaking algorithm doesn't grab bots. It grabs those people, the top ranked people with the top gear and all that wealth and knowledge against people that have just started and that gives such a bad impression of the game. Right, the and, and you don't want new players getting frustrated after two and two or three matches and, and just dropping it and never playing again. Absolutely, it, yeah. it's it. There's there's a certain danger to that with the, the matchmaker, especially where they haven't launched any sort of solo uh, modes yet. Yeah. Um, like there's there's nowhere else for you to go. Like it's not like MCOC where it's just like eh, I'm getting my butt kicked in Alliance War. I'm going to drop down to a lower tier or not play for a mm. while and play the other parts of the game that that I like. Like with it's it's all um, it's all pretty much player versus player arena or the uh, players versus the the adaptoids. But you need to play arena to actually progress. Yeah. In in MROC, so. You can't really avoid it for that long. No, and this is a good thing about having the different modes, and that's 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 great. It's like I think you'll have four modes. I want to say at one given time if onslaught's running, and there is plans to like put in other stuff. So I'm gonna put on screen for those that that are watching on YouTube the the dev diary of uh, 2021, which we're gonna talk about a little bit. Um, yeah, it's great to see that they they kind of learned a, a communication lesson from mcoc and and had this dev diary ready to go mm -hmm. the day after launch because they're going to do like this is, we've talked about the thing that we would have liked to have seen from marvel realm because we weren't quite sure what it was going to be first off would there be like an open world type thing where you get to explore similar to how i think marvel future rev is going to be uh tip yeah. to be but there's definitely something called World Quests, where they say weekly World Quests will send you to every corner of the battle world as you continue to discover the mysteries that the planet has to offer. World Quests will require you to think critically about what champion you bring and the loadout you go into battle with. These quests so I like are, very much. <laughs> yeah. Tests of skill, yeah. not just power. Experience, experience handcrafted stories that progress as each World Quest releases. New conversations between the barons of the battle world and new codexes and codex entries will reveal the rich history and story of the battle world. And that's that thing about the selection of gear becoming becoming more important. Like, will you have to bring a type of resistance gear in in order to counteract? And this is the thing about right, how many pieces of gear. I mean, we talked about this ago. I think you said it'd be good if they had had more available gear that you could hold on to. Yeah. So, and this, this is a perfect example because you might go like I, in in some cases I've kept one piece of gear that has health and an armor, but also I've kept one that's got like um, power, uh, special power and uh, attack or something. And it's just a case of going like, okay, well I I, I want to have the one with armor, lots of armor, still there, so that when I feel like I want to change the way that my gearing functions, I can then switch between them. And and how much of a bearing that's going to have on how we create loadouts for yeah. MROC in the future and how much we can hold, because that gear is going to be important to hold. Absolutely. And I, what are, where I'm guessing they're going is if you're going into a certain um, champion's territory, you're going to want uh, your gear to counter that champion, right? So mm. there's some gear that has mythic resistance. So if yes. you're going into the Temple of Vishante, I imagine you're going to want to stack up on your mythic resistance or you, there's others is like slashing resistance. So yeah. say you're going into uh, Wakanda 
um, and you're going to be facing some Black Panthers, uh, you're probably going to want that slashing resistance. So mm -hmm. um, I I think this is all good because I, I really like the, the story that we've seen teased from the trailers and from the website, and I want to see that brought into the game. Yeah. And it's important for different pieces of gear to mean something, right? Yeah. Uh, that it, so it's not just like the big numbers and you want to be, you want, th there should be some strategy for, on the player's part. Of like, mm. all right, how are we going to build this? Because, you know, right now you can only, your strategy is like, well, I should just bring the the best gear because I don't know who I'm going to be facing in arena, right? Like, why bring something that's really good against, uh, say, Black Panther if you don't know you're going to be facing a Black Panther in the arena? And yeah. there's no way for you to know that. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a fun time. We've only like, what, we're not in a few days. Into... Only got, yeah, only, we're only like three days in. Uh, the other thing is I like that it looks like they're going to allow you to customize your gear look a little bit more. So uh, it sounds like there's going to be ways to, like you say you get a, a certain piece of gear mm -hmm. and you like the stats, but you want the look to be different. It looks like they may have a way for you to change that. Which yeah, could be real cool. That's gonna because be nice. I I know I have a certain I like a certain look for some of these champions. Some of them it's cool to like mix and match, and some of them like mm -hmm. with Storm like there's a there's a white costume and a blue costume and a black one, and I kind of want to have one of each, <laughs> but there's only twenty five slots for gear, so it's gonna be tough. Yeah, I mean I like I got a very kind of like weird headdress on my on my Storm. It's it's kind of like it it's a it's a rare piece of gear. Uh, but it's like got two fins coming out the top. But oh got, like, yeah, I know on. the the one that the um, the storm uh, bot wears too, yeah. right? Yeah, it's got mine's got a central mohawk as well. Hang on, is that that's kind of standard, Yo, you will, isn't it? No, it's if you're standard. yeah, you if, if you're not using the mohawk on storm, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like that, the mohawk's so cool. That is the choice. Mm -hmm. Use the mohawk, folks. Use the mohawk. Yeah. I, I do like. Have you noticed that they've added like little descriptors, uh, descriptors to the uh, the gear? Yeah, uh, I like that. Um, is this what? Hang on a Odin once sought to into what ingratiate himself with Pyramid X, offering vest vestments of the Valkyrie, Valkyrie, Valkyrie to Apocalypse Horseman. Is that? What are you talking about? Some some of them, yeah. Like if you click on like oh, uh, yeah, yeah, cause Hulk's it's... helmet, like if you uh, click on the helmet, it's like bucket leak water, so Hulk make into helmet. Also, Hulk <laughs> no like cleaning anyway. <laughs> Hang on, I've got I've I've got to, I've got to like read one of these. So I've just loaded up Hulk. Let's have a look at the head. Made from teeth and jaws of gamma mutated saber tooths, this gear is awarded to victors of the kill Sam. And that's not that's no, no that's that's not even no. What am I doing? I'm not really reading it properly. Um, anti Hulk tanks were once a common sight. Now the Hulks wear their plating as trophies. Hulk yeah, so punched through puny machine and got stuck on our Hulk arm. Joke on puny <laughs> machine. Hulk have bracelet now. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so there's lots of little tidbits about the gear, and, and there's a lot of world building uh, that's going on. So I, I'm interested to see where they go with it. I think uh, a, a big part of it is just going to have to be patience, right? Like, I, I know they've done the beta, but it's, it's still a new game. They've clearly mm -hmm. got a lot that they're going to roll out with this game, but... Uh, it's not all going to come on a uh, line at once. If you look at it, MCOC, it was the same way, right? Like, mm -hmm. at the beginning, champions didn't have SIG abilities. We didn't have 180 playable characters, and we didn't have alliances and alliance war and alliance quest and incursions. So uh, if you like the game, just uh, just be patient with it. Yeah, I think one of the other things being patient with is the new champions that get released. Like, you can choose to buy. That's up to you. But as well... If you want to do onslaughts, there are another option to pick up these champions. Bit of a controversy this week was that getting the uh, Captain America, sorry, the uh, Super Soldier, you had to do either onslaughts or you could buy and 
I don't know, people kind of went, oh, paywall, but it's like, look, it's, it's like early access. It's the same thing like, well, are these people, same people that play Marvel Contest Champions? Do they have a problem with early access bundles? You don't see them shouting at uh, Seaton every time he opens up a load of them. Hey, hey for, for 10 bucks in MCOC, you're not guaranteed to get that yeah, that's champion another from thing, a, yeah. a Cavalier Crystal. Like, hey, um, I mean, let's let's we have to be honest, right? Like, this is a mm. game that was developed. They hopefully uh, will recoup their investment and do very well, but um they do have to make money off this yeah uh, i haven't spent any money yet uh i just i don't know what i would spend money on yeah right now uh you kind of have to learn the economy of the game and see what's really valuable for you but yeah they uh have, mobile games need paying customers that's mm. part of it so if you uh you can you can pay and get the champion uh early or you can do the work yeah. and get the champion yeah, and uh, that's gonna be the, that's gonna be the choice. You gotta you gotta enjoy it yep. whilst you on different. Kind of, I mean, let's think. Even if you buy the um, Super Soldier, I don't think there's much available when it comes to gear just yet. You you start at the 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 beginning. You end up having to grind it out yourself. There are a few bits yeah. that you're that you that you're grabbing, but it's not going to be like you know too fabulous just yet. So yeah, just do onslaught. I think. Yeah, um, I don't. Is it is the time out of mind is that his crate i don't know um that's um, a good point i'm looking in the units now and um uh i think that's got oh that's um uh what's it called temple of ashanti that's uh, oh, the, okay. supreme oh no no gotcha. hang on no uh only available in the crate is super soldier retro gear not available. oh sorry super soldier retro gear not available so it's exclusive Scarlet Witch or retro items, but uh, Super Soldier okay. doesn't have any of the retro gear. So I guess some of the retro gear, gear for the other champions is available. All very gotcha. confusing. All very confusing. Um, <laughs> final thing to talk about is uh, I know some prominent YouTubers have said their piece on the game. Uh, quite funny because somebody, one of those, set, not not Seaton, but somebody else said some stuff about the game. And funny enough, uh, just before recording the podcast, I just saw them actually playing in the game. So, you know, um, a bit weird, isn't it, to, to slate a game and then continue to play. But anyway, these people do you. But that's the thing. I don't... A lot of the problems, I do agree with some of the things raised by Seaton, but there's some there are other kind of like bits where I was like, I don't know if it's too early to, to judge. I understand the game through went extensive beta, but I don't think it was at a point where it's a finished thing. They've still got to oh, massively no. understand where they're going. I mean, MCOC, like, you know, um, where did... I think Seton started playing back in 2016. Um, we were 2015. MCOC 2015 was a very different game to what it is now. And it definitely had to evolve. Yes. Yeah, I mean, from January... Oh, for sure. The, the idea of skill with it, skill usage in Marvel Contest of Champions between, say, January 2015 and December 20, 2015 was just not there. People weren't posting skill-based videos. They were just doing the same thing. They were trying to Yeah, parry. they were just like, so this is how you get a perfect block team. Yeah. And you win. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's it. That you. I think that's the thing. You know, you can say that you. Anybody can play mobile games for an extent of amount of time, but everyone will say the first year is always different to, or how how it is, is like years in the future if the game survives. It's always right. substantially different. Look at Marvel Future Fight. The game's practically dead. Have they evolved anything from the start point to where they are? I don't know. I, I can't really say, it. but. You know, at least you know there's there's kind of things to mention with that the way that I mean, at least uh, with with realm, uh, you know, we've got a holiday calendar, we've got a December calendar, uh, like they've already incorporated a lot of stuff that we didn't see uh, until years into yeah <laughs> MCOC, so that's good. And I don't know about you, but I'm at 1,900 units right now. Uh, I think I've bought maybe one crate just to see what's up, but they are uh they are throwing us a fair amount of units in yeah. in our day-to-day -day grind like i i don't feel 
uh, bad at all about my unit gain in this game. I don't quite know what my unit gain means, <laughs> mm. but that is that is the, the paid currency. Yep. Um, I bought and... a load of onslaught crystals, so I have nothing. I'm there like going like, uh... Dan, you talk about your crystal, all your, all your your units, and I'm like going like, oh god, I spent all my units. <laughs> damn, damn. Yeah, because they do. I mean, it's it's basically it's the same uh, multiples that you'd see in MCOC for units. So 3,100 units, mm -hmm. the War Thor spoils is 100 bucks US. Yeah. And all the way down to 5 bucks for 135 units. They've, step, they, they've kept consistency with the way that they are charging. I understand. Yes. I mean, so yeah. I wasn't, no, I was expecting. I mean, I just, I just, I've got a video on my um, second channel, so Rich's Realm. Where I've just seen now, I spent two thousand units on um, onslaught crates, and I don't think I got a single rare piece of gear. I think I was very disappointed with that. But you know, it looks like Kabam's luck is going from one game to another. Although I say that, and I've pulled more rare gear from doing arena conquest grind today than I've ever done. I picked up the drones weaponry for for Iron Man. I picked up another piece of. Hulk rare gear. I think I picked up another gamma hammer for for Hulk as well. All today, uh, so that was that was nice. That was nice to do. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I I do think that we're going to see a lot of evolution, particularly where it comes to the gear, and yeah. and we should. Um, I I think we've got to we've got to see where they're going with it, and there's no there's no substitute for time. Absolutely. This, so. Yeah. I'm, I've got to be honest, I, and you know, to, to kind of end on 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 the same point that we we kind of like started. I'm enjoying the game. I like Marvel Realm. I I'm not spending at the moment. I may spend down the line. I'm still on the fence with it. But as well, I I understand where they're going. I like it. I like the fight dynamic. I wanted to play Marvel Super War. I w w would never get an opportunity to play it and now that i've you know seen this game in the way that it's delivered i'm really enjoying it yeah me too i'm excited to see uh where they uh where they take the game but yeah it's uh i've kind of been carving out like a, a good half hour 45 minutes for mm. uh in the evening for uh realm the last few nights since uh the game went on global and uh yeah i'm just I just been looking forward to that that time um, playing the game. It's been good. Yeah, I think that's a good point to end on. All right. So thank you everybody for for listening on in to the contest round podcast. This was episode forty three, talking about a lot of stuff from the week, including the Marvel Realm releases and everything else with new MCOC content. And do bear in mind, we will be doing some very special podcasts that will be reflecting on stuff for this year and hopes for next year. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure to catch Dan on www.frontlinemcc.home.blog and as well, make sure to follow all the respective streaming platforms. We're on YouTube with the playlist, SoundCloud, Spotify and iTunes. And yeah, thanks for listening and see you all soon.